Hello students, this is Prabodh Nayak here, a qualified USCMA and a USCPA and I am in the station line for the last 25 years plus. Teaching students is my passion and I am known for conceptual coaching which means that I don't do just reading of the books but I also teach you conceptually the terms and whatever is to be studied from the examination point of view so that you as a student will be ready for the exam whether it is MCQs, whether it is uh, case studies and uh, whether it is a lengthy question that you have to answer whether it is a difficult question or an easy question all the things are tackled by us at this level students have the confidence in me because as I said I am known for conceptual coaching now today we are going to start with the first area of uh, FAR and uh, this is my favorite uh, paper as such. In this first area, that is area 1, we are going to cover introduction to financial reporting, financial statements, statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flows, consolidated financial statements, public company reporting, special purpose frameworks, financial statement ratios and performance metrics. So in this we will be covering all these topics and today I'll be just giving you a brief introduction to what is financial reporting all about. Every business at the end of the year has to prepare its profit or loss statement and the balance sheet and together this is called as you can say the financial reports or the financial statements which are showing the performance of the company for the particular year. So, we have to report to the various stakeholders of the company at the end of each year and therefore we have something called as a financial reporting process. This financial reporting process is the accounting process of communication of the financial information about the business, about the entity to its various stakeholders. Financial reports are required and depended upon by various stakeholders and other regulatory agencies. So friends, the financial statements are required by various stakeholders of the company because it contains various information which is required by each one of them. What is this information and who does this information go to? Who are interested in these financial statements? These financial statements are interested by various stakeholders like we have the shareholders, the investors, prospective investors, creditors, bankers financial institutions, employees. What does this financial statement contain? Financial statement contains information which is used to make informed decisions regarding allocation of resources. As we all know students, resources are scarce and therefore they have to be allocated properly. They have to be allocated in a judicial manner. So when we prepare financial statements, we are telling the investors, we are telling the stakeholders that look here, we have taken care of the resources, we have allocated them in the best possible manner. For that purpose, the stakeholders to get confidence, they have to look at the financial data. Therefore, what is the objective of financial reporting? The objective of financial reporting is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential investors, existing investors, shareholders, bankers, financial institutions which have invested in the company, potential investors, lenders of money and other creditors in the decision making process about providing resources to the business. On the basis of this information, the investors may take the decision to buy, sell or hold their debt or equity instruments. So for example, a shareholder wants to know whether he has to buy more shares or sell his existing investment or hold his investments till a further period, till a further date. For this purpose, he should know the financials of the company. He should know how strong the company is. What are the fundamentals of the company? Are there prospects for future growth? Are the profits going to increase in future? Are the, comp are the new projects going to be taken up by the company? What is the productivity of the capital? invested in the company. So for all this purpose and to know the financial health of the company, the financial statements are 
required. Financial reports allow the management to identify trends, potential roadblocks, and actively track their financial performance in real time. So whatever data you provide, for example, you give me the current year's data. As an investor, as an interested stakeholder, I can compare your current year's data with the last three years' data. And I can find out whether your company has been progressing or not progressing. I can find out whether the company's financial performance has improved or not. I can find out whether there will be future prospects for growth or not. So, overall, from the financial statements, I can get an idea as to what is the financial health of the company. So, we can also find out the trends. What has been the trend in the revenue? Has the revenue been increasing over the last three years? What is the trend in the profits? Are the profits increasing in the last three years? I can compare my business with competitors' business. I can try to find out what are the possible roadblocks or the stumbling blocks or the potential problems that may arise and actively track the financial performance in real time. Staying on top of your financial statements will give you the foundation you need to make quick and sound economic decisions when the time comes. So when the time comes, that is when you have to take a decision whether to invest or not, whether you want to invest more or not whether you have to exit from the company. For that purpose, we require the data, the financial data of the company. Okay? Financial reports are required by law. Government requires the financial reports. IRS in US requires the financial reports. For calculation of tax. So, they are required by law for tax purpose and the IRS, that is Internal Revenue Service, uses these reports to evaluate a company's income tax. <coughs> Accurate financial reporting will reduce the risk for error and save an immense amount of time. That means if you are recording the transactions correctly, there will be a lot of time saved because the possibility for errors will be less. It relieves the overall burden that comes along with filing your income tax returns every year. Financial reports provide information about how an organization obtains and spends the cash and other resources about its borrowings and repayment of borrowings and about all other factors that may affect an organization's liquidity. So if the company has taken loans, if the company has borrowings, is the company paying interest on time? Is the company defaulting on the payment of principal or interest? For how long the loans have been taken? When are the loans to be repaid? Is the company meeting the deadlines? Right? So this will give us an idea about the financial strength of the company, the liquidity of the company, the availability of cash of the company, the future cash flows of the company, and how it is going to be applied. Now, the second thing that we have to know here is when we talk about financial statements, what does it include? The full set of financial statements is made up of five things. The first one is called a statement of financial position at the end of the period. Statement of financial position is nothing but the balance sheet of the organization, the balance sheet of the entity. We can call it in short as SOFP, that is statement of financial position. The second is the statement of earnings or the statement of profit or loss or also called as the income statement. This statement of earnings will show us what is the profit earned during the year. Then we can have a separate statement of comprehensive income for the period or we can club it along with the statement of earnings and we can have one single statement of earnings which is divided into two sections. The first part being the income part and the second part being the OCR section. Then we can have the statement of cash flows where the total cash flows are divided into different categories where we want to find out as to how the cash flows have taken place in the business, how much of cash has come into the business and gone out of the business arising on account of operating activities, how much of cash flows have entered the business and gone out of the business arising on account of investing activities and likewise 
on the basis of financing activities. So we require a statement of cash flows for that purpose. And finally, the statement of shareholders equity, <coughs> where we will show be, where we will be showing the amount of share capital that has been raised by the company, the additional paid in capital, that is any share premium that has been collected over and above the par value of the shares, the retained earnings, the revaluation surplus, if any. So all these balances together will be shown in what we call as statement of shareholders equity. Right? What are the elements of financial statements? The elements of financial statements are specified in as FAC 6, that is elements of financial statements. They are defined as below. So let us try to see what are the definitions of assets, liabilities, investment by owners, invest, uh, distribution to owners, comprehensive income, revenues, expenses, gains, losses, all these terms as is to be studied under US GAPS and also as per the requirements of the subject FAR. Assets, for example, they are defined as probable future economic benefits which are obtained or controlled by an entity as a result of past transactions or events. So basically, if you go to see students, you have to know that we are not considered about basically the ownership of the asset. What is more important than that is controlling of the asset. Is it controlled by the entity? Okay. Probable future economic benefits, is it going to result in future economic benefits, future cash flows? By using the assets, will it result in future cash flows to the entity? Will it be resulting in where the assets are controlled by the entity? Are they controlled by the entity as a result of past transactions or events? Meaning, as a result of the assets being purchased earlier or acquired earlier. So that is the concept of assets. Coming to the concept of liabilities, liabilities are probable future sacrifices of economic benefits. They arise from present obligations of an entity to transfer assets or provide services to other entities as a result of past transactions or events. They are probable future sacrifices. If I purchase goods today on credit basis, I am not making the payment today. I will be making the payment after two months, after three months. And after two or three months, I have to sacrifice. How will I sacrifice? I will sacrifice by making payment to creditors. So there is an outflow of cash. There is a transfer of asset. So assets are transferred to transfer assets or provide services to other entities. As a result of the past transactions, and what is the past transaction that I have purchased goods on credit basis? Then I have the concept of equity. Equity is the residual interest in the assets of the entity after subtracting the liabilities. In other words, equity is the ownership interest in the entity. So friends, equity is the balancing figure. You can see because we have defined it as the residual interest you can see here very clearly it is given as a residual interest in the assets of the entity so whatever remains after payment of liabilities it is the ownership interest in the entity so equity is the ownership interest in the entity so how can you define equity what is the formula for equity formula for equity is total of assets minus total of liabilities. It is a net result that remains after liabilities are deducted from assets. Right? So, we are looking at things now in a slightly different manner as what we normally do. That is the requirement of international exams. Then we come to investment by owners. Investment by owners in what form? If I have to invest in an entity, if I have to invest in a company, I will have to invest by purchasing the shares of the company. So I am investing by purchasing say 1000 shares of the company at the rate of $10 per share. 
so I am investing $10,000. What is the result of the investment? It increases the equity of the business entity during the period. Okay, so investment by owners is in the form of investment in the form of shares, which are, you can say, common stock, ordinary shares, or preferred stock, preferred stock, the stock is nothing but preference shares. Distribution to owners. What is the meaning of distribution to owners? It is a decrease in equity of the business during a period. By payment of dividends, what you actually do is you are distributing a part of the profits to the shareholders. So payment of dividends is nothing but distribution to owners. What will that do to the equity? That will reduce the equity. How? Because equity is comprising of an item called as retained earnings. So if I am distributing dividends out of retained earnings, the retained earnings will accordingly reduce. Comprehensive income. Comprehensive income includes all the changes in equity of a business entity during a period, except those resulting from investment by owners and distribution to owners. Okay? So, except those, this is what you have to remember, except those resulting from investment by owners and distribution to owners. What is a revenue? A revenue is nothing but an inflow of cash or enhancement of assets. When you are selling goods, there is a revenue. And what happens? There is an inflow of cash. There is an inflow of cash. Cash is an asset. Or other enhancement of assets or settlement of liabilities from producing goods or rendering services or other activities that qualify as ongoing major or central operations. What are expenses? Expenses are outflows of cash. So you can see that revenues are inflows of cash. Expenses are resulting in outflows of cash or outflows of any other assets, use of assets or incurrences of liability or both from producing goods or rendering services or other activities that qualify as ongoing major or central operations. What are gains? Gains will increase the equity because retained earnings will increase. From peripheral or incremental transactions or other events and circumstances except revenue or investment by owners. Gains are net inflows or the difference between the amount received and the book value. An asset having a carrying value of $30,000 is sold for $35,000. So there is a gain of $5,000. Likewise, losses are decreases in equity from peripheral or incremental transactions or other events and circumstances except expenses or distributions to owners. So distribution to owners, for example, dividends are distributed to owners. You can't call that as a loss. But yes, if there is a sale of an asset having a book value of $30,000 for $28,000, then there is a loss of $2,000. So these are the basic terms or these are the basic, you can say, elements of financial statements. Right? So we conclude this session here and I will meet you in the second session very shortly. Thank you. Have a nice day.